Well, Steven's engine is in, but we all know it's not how the engine looks, it's how it runs. Does this baby run? Let's find out. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. I'm here with Steven's WJ. We got ourselves a straight six 4.0 in this bad boy. Uh, if you remember the last video I did, the old engine was blown up to bits. That is serious damage. It was shattered to pieces, jammed up the whole crankshaft, couldn't get the engine to crank. It was seized. It's not about just dropping in a new engine. There's also other things involved, other factors you have to consider to getting a Jeep running again after a catastrophic failure like that. And I'm gonna walk you through everything I had to consider. A lot of diagnosis, diag diagnostics, a lot of diagnostics were involved getting this baby to a run again. Man, it was a B, I'll tell you that. But uh, yeah, it's in, it's done. Let's walk you through it and then we'll start it up. All right, so here we have Steven's WJ. It's got a 4.0. We had a donor engine. I put this engine in and I'll go through all the things I did so you know what's uh, what to expect when you do a swap. So of course I took the old engine apart while it was still in the vehicle because it was seized up. I couldn't turn the crank. So what I had to do was detach everything off the left and right side. I took off the intake, took off the exhaust, unplugged everything, all the electronics, and uh, what I did was I took the head off and it exposed the uh, busted cylinder six. The piston was shattered, gone, kaput. Still couldn't turn it because I had to get up in there under the oil pan and dig out all of the busted chunks of aluminum piston. That way I was able to free the engine so I could get to the torque converter bolts pull the torque converter bolts and then I was able to separate the engine get the old guy out had a little fun game of 4.0 ski ball with my dad we are playing 4.0 ski ball what you do is you take your old engine block and you take some old lifters right here what you're gonna do is try to shoot them into the holes of course cylinder one is one and cylinder six is six so let's go Ooh, three Miss, miss, three, ooh, four. <laughs> you won, seven to six. <laughs> then I gave that old 4.0 the heave, dumped it off at the scrapyard. Bye bye, engine block. It's kind of a shame because I usually like to salvage everything I can off the old bad engine. This way I could put it towards my next engine swap. But uh, whatever, sometimes it's a total loss. That engine was exploded. Hey, I found the valve. Look at this. Blah, Jeep mucus. So this baby needed a new engine. So what we needed was a parts Jeep. This Jeep was kind enough to donate its engine. It gave up its life so this Jeep could live again. Uh, long story short, I got a, another engine for this and now this Jeep runs again. It wasn't rusty like I thought it was. I cleaned it up. It was worth saving. This is my new WJ project. We'll talk about that later. But I pulled the engine out of this thing to put in here. So once the engine was out, I polished up the pistons. I cleaned up the ports of the head, put a new head gasket on. A rugged ridge aftermarket tubular exhaust header uh, that oh man it's it's good it's not great it does fit with the new gasket on I did have to modify the bolts a little bit I had to make I think the number four bolt a little bit shorter so I could fit it in there and uh, I definitely had some issues mating up the Y pipe with the down tubes this thing's got the cats so it's uh it's much harder to work with it's harder to access i don't know if you can 
see the cats in there. They make everything more difficult. But yeah, so we got the new exhaust. This is a new intake manifold. The other one was also busted. There's also another busted piston in there. I found the damage later on. So I did a whole refresh on this engine, all the top end stuff, painted it up, and then uh, I, I put it in. Standard stuff, I've done about three engine swaps this year, so it's nothing really out of the ordinary, nothing I'm not used to doing. So I put it in and I bolted everything up, and then when it came for my famous moment of truth, well, she started. Everything seemed to be running okay, I guess, but it felt like it was misfiring pretty bad. At first, I thought it might have been the exhaust not lining up right with the Y-pipe, so uh, I checked for an exhaust leak. It was definitely rattling in there and making a horrible hissing, ticking sound. But then I soon came to realize that it was a misfire. Hmm, what could cause a vehicle to misfire? on an engine that was running perfectly in the old vehicle, but ha, uh, running like crap in the new vehicle. Misfire, misfire. Well, my first guess was the camshaft position sensor. A lot of times it will be crusty when you put it on, so I just wanted to make sure really quick that it wasn't the camshaft position sensor. So I just took off these two screws. They're like 7 30 seconds. You just pop off the plug, take off the screws. There's a little magnet inside that spins around in the little camshaft position sensor. That's the actual uh, gear that rotates and spins. This is the sensor cap. Uh, opened it up, nothing. Plugged it back in, still misfired. So I figured maybe I jacked up the timing. So what I did was I took off the whole shaft. You just take off that 13 millimeter bolt and then you got to make sure that this baby is set at top dead center. You got to rotate the harmonic balancer till it is at zero. And of course you have to make sure that, well, take off the coil pack. You take off spark plug one and you make sure that it is compression stroke and it's top dead center. So top dead center, compression stroke, that's how you set your timing. You gotta put a little toothpick in this bad boy, drop it in, make sure it's aligned. I don't know, it's like 11 o'clock position. You know what, I should make a video on this one day, but now's not the day. Today's not the day and I'm not the one. So, uh, reset the timing, started it back up. Still misfiring, it was not the timing. Maybe it was this new fuel rail, right? Right? So, what I did was, I went and I pulled the fuel rail, and I checked inside it, because I had to assemble this fuel rail. It's a very nice fuel rail. I actually want to get one for myself. It's a uh, anodized aluminum, beautiful welds, and custom. So, I checked inside. I figured, heck, maybe I blocked it up with some foam, packing foam inside, and I didn't know it, so I took the fuel rail out took a good look inside and it was full of fuel and nothing else so the fuel rail wasn't obstructed i did an injector swap i put all the original injectors back in because as we know sometimes you get parts doa the owner did buy new injectors these are all new four hole injectors so i did an injector swap also that wasn't it so after taking off the fuel rail two more times i do believe i was able to rule out everything battery alternator coil was iffy we ended up going with a new one as you can see but uh yeah it was still running like crap so then i decided to check the coil what i did was i took the coil that was on this jeep and i ran it on that jeep and it seemed okay it wasn't too sure then i checked all six of these fuel injector plugs a simple way to check if your fuel injectors are firing properly is you just start the Jeep and while it's running, you just pull the little plug off the injector and if it fires differently when you unplug it, then you'll know that it's firing when it's plugged in and running well. Pull it out and it doesn't work, then you know that it's not the one it is working. But if you happen to pull a plug off while it's running and nothing happens, that's kind of a problem. You'll know that it's not working properly. It's not working! So I unplugged all six of these fuel injector plugs, and lo and behold, 
Uh, number four, I got no change. And number six, I got no change. So four and six weren't working right. And well, I remembered back to when I pulled piston six out of the cylinder six hole and realized, well, if six isn't firing right here uh, on this engine, six must have not have been firing right on the old engine. And hey, maybe that's the reason why the whole thing exploded. So something was wrong with six and something may have been wrong with four since I pulled the injector plug off and nothing happened. It wasn't firing correctly. So obviously now I know I'm working with six and four. So what I did next, it kind of threw me off because I tested the signal that was coming out of these wires right here. I plugged in the thingy to an old test light and I grounded it and I was getting a signal. It was pulsing and it was firing as it should be. But how on earth could it not be running right? Well, if it wasn't the injectors, well, then it had to be the coil, right? But I just tested the coil. I used a new coil from this and I used the old coil from this on that. So they both seem to be working okay. I'll get more into that in a little bit. Uh, I was kind of getting baffled. Um, I made sure that I had all good grounds everywhere. The battery was charged. It was an electrical issue. The alternator was charging. Uh, all my grounds are hooked up where it should be. Sometimes I know it's possible to forget a ground when you do an engine swap, especially these little straps like this. But everything was connected. It wasn't a ground issue. And again, I was getting signal, but it was weird. I ended up putting a test meter on it and it wasn't getting the proper voltage so I was getting a signal but it was a weak signal so of course that led me to believe it was a PCM issue. Here is the original PCM this was the one I expected to be bad inside C2 was full of this gooey corrosion stuff ah, actually I cleaned it out with contact cleaner but I was really certain really very certainly certain that since this was oozing that uh, this PCM was shot so I went ahead and had the owner get a new one with my fingers crossed so here is your PCM if you can see in there <laughs> that is a nice new shiny PCM I got from all computer resources thank you ACR and tried it one more time and it did run, but it still ran crappy. Now, after all of this swapping Jeep drama, cheat my life, the only thing I wasn't able to check completely was the wire harness. I did a continuity test and I was getting signal zero ohms from point A to point B. So I knew they were connected, but something wasn't right. And I was able to find it out by looking down in here at the wires to injector number six. I figured if there was a wire issue, it would be a melting issue and it gets hot back there. And since piston six exploded, I started there. Now this right here is a picture of the wires going to injector number six and they were kind of melted together. And uh, I'm gonna warn you guys, what you're about to see next is horrifying. I slowly began to open up a can of worms. Every wire in this rail, this electrical harness, was just about fused and melted together, especially back around here. There we go. What you're looking at right now is a head stud. And what happens is this wire harness, it can get hot sometimes back there and it could rub against that stud and cause a wire short. Now this is a boot for a spark plug. We found an extra one laying around and went ahead and sleeved that stud for extra protection. But this whole entire wire harness was just a mangled, gross mess of melty, gooey wires. Hence the electrical issues and man, it wasn't pretty. So once we got the wires pulled apart and separated, they were melted together like a spaghetti. It was disgusting, but these got all taped back up and uh, 
A new harness was sort of made. Didn't have to do any splicing or soldering because the wires themselves were intact, but the wire, the, sh the shield, the shrouding was just uh, like melted together and, and some points they were shorting out. So what I think happened, now follow me here guys, when I pulled the old engine, it was covered in engine sludge, this thick, black, tarry junk. Now that's that's a sign of poor engine maintenance. The previous owner uh, must not have changed his oil, ever. Uh, Steve, I'm sorry, man. I don't know if you got duped. St Steve, my buddy, he bought the Jeep from somebody, and he only had the Jeep for a couple months. So I'm not blaming the lack of ma maintenance on, on Steve, not at all. I don't know who he got it from, but man, the sludge in this thing was so bad that when I flipped the engine block upside down, when I was just messing with it inside the back of my dad's pickup truck, I couldn't get the lifters out. I had to hammer them out. They were seized so badly in that engine. It was just, it was awful. So I, I think lack of maintenance may have caused this thing to start overheating and the heat in this engine must have melted the wires and the wires caused all the shorts. So the heat melts the wires, the wires short together in certain spots, causing cylinder six and cylinder four to do some funky sharing the juice thing. Uh, those shorts may have shorted the PCM and something must have went wrong catastrophically. Maybe this thing was doing 70 down the highway, who knows, but uh, maybe the signals were crossed Number six started firing when number four should have been firing. Long story short is cylinder six and piston six explode. The whole engine seizes up and then it was kaput. So the engine swap was the easy thing. Trying to trace the original source of the problem, that was a pain in the butt. That part almost took as much time as pulling an engine and putting a new one back in. Definitely, without a doubt, a lot of work, but if you could get a Jeep running again, it is absolutely worth it. <laughs> Look, I just realized that I forgot to put this part back on. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Didn't mean it. There we go. All right, so we are definitely going to fire this thing up, let you see it run. But before we do that, I'm going to give you a quick overview of Steve's beautiful WJ and uh, let you guys see all the work I did to it. We'll soak it in a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, we'll get it, we'll get it running and driving. Left to right, I'll show you everything I did to this Jeep. Uh, took out the battery and I reconditioned it on my smart charger, so it is 100% healthy. It is good to go. Of course, we got the new PCM in there. Let's see what else. Uh, I got a new dipstick, a new used dipstick from the junkyard because I broke off the other one. I do it every time. It's so annoying. New dipstick handle. Let's see, we got a camshaft position sensor, new k and oil filter. Steve went with the MSD coil packs because the other one he had, it was kind of firing weak. I don't know if it was affected by the wire shorts. So he, uh, he ponied up the dough for a beauty. This thing sparks right up, it's amazing. We got a valve cover painted to match the body. Of course, we have custom wire harness. We got all new fuel injectors. We have an aftermarket aluminum fuel rail. This is really nice, I love it. Steve's got the Rough Country intake on it. He had that before. I got the vehicle, I can't take credit for it. Uh, we did O2 sensors, that's right. This is an O2 sensor pigtail back there. When it wasn't right, I was still baffled. I forgot to mention, I changed all the O2 sensors because as you know, the uh, the ZJ video, from my ZJ video, the uh, bad O2 sensors could give you a misfire. So all new or tested, one of them is new, O2 sensors. We got ourselves the ghetto hood latch. <laughs> I don't know what happened, Steve. What, what, what were we doing? We were gonna put these new ones on? Oh, oh you know what? I sent Steve a link so I could get all new pistons, the struts for the glass, the lift gate, and the hood. But he had new ones, so I think he's just gonna do these when he gets the vehicle back on his own. So, <laughs> ghetto hood prop. Uh, coming down in here. Oh yeah, let's see, yeah, that's right. Uh, we did the intake. I uh, put a new one on, one of my own, scrubbed it, cleaned it, painted it, uh, aluminum color. Uh, his exhaust 
and we got the exhaust gasket we got a valve cover gasket we did the head gasket uh, we did the little grommets so you can't forget the valve cover grommets very important going back to the passenger side I got a passenger side motor mount right there passenger side I'll uh, see we also had to put in a new pulley a new pulley and alternator housing the other one was seized on and when I pulled the bolt out it just cracked to pieces so I uh, scored a new one at the junkyard it was in really good condition uh, that is on there on this side at the bottom down there we got motor mounts can't see them We've got motor mounts on the driver's side so a whole new set of motor mounts uh, this is a new belt we got a new belt this old one was pretty grimy we also did a new thermostat we did a new water pump uh, timing chain timing chain cover was nice and painted and cleaned out and this thing uh, <laughs> runs like a top uh, again all top end stuff the front and the top worked out really well coming around here let's see we did other things besides the engine uh, Steve needed a header panel he had a lazy eye Jeep was kind of busted up in the front and the uh, the quick fix was to drill his headlight into the header panel not sure who did that it's a very interesting fix <laughs> a new header panel took care of everything headlights are sitting fine just now I restored everything with factory hardware and I tried to plug the hole with some some that sticky butyl and a, a little plungy Christmas tree fastener just kind of mush that together trying to keep the air out well the humid air out doing a pretty good job still a little bit of condensation ah it's a pain in the butt headlights suck but yeah got the bumper on nice and good everything is looking great in here of course got my Dan H sticker uh, what else did we do I gave it a quick touch-up paint you know behind the grill because he's got the open slats and you can see the condenser I went ahead and hit that off with a little bit of paint nice and black taken care of looking good a couple bonus features was I gave him a matching interior door panel uh, this lock actuator was busted he was missing one of those uh, those those bars those aluminum bars that that uh, unlocked the door when you pull the handle it was snapped off so put a new one on now his door is locked and open correctly another bonus feature was the fixings of the window put a new window regulator on window goes up and down like a gem the new PCM also featured a skim delete so to do that I had to pop off the steering column shroud just unplug the skim module uh, let's see what else nothing much in here oh I did recharge the AC I put two bottles of Freon in this thing but unfortunately uh, there is a leak somewhere in the system uh, sorry Steve you had ice cold AC for a day and <laughs> that's about it so this baby is all ready to go it's got fresh WD-40 <laughs> what am I talking about wow I'm fried today it's got fresh 10W30 Rotella oil in it. It's got that good stuff, that zinc. I also put a little bit of Rislone in it and some ZDDP, ZDDDDP additive. I uh, want to make sure these lifters move nice and smooth. Uh, it's not that it's breaking in again. It's, I don't know, it feels like it's new to me. So I'm just making sure everything is as smooth as can be. Uh, I think that's about it. You know, filters. We got gaskets. Uh, did I mention I did a new rear main seal? Yeah, rear main seal, a, an oil pump. So this whole thing is, is taken care of. Uh, oil pan gasket, uh, it, it's good to go. I, I think we're gonna, we're gonna start it now. That, that's just about it. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. All right, we're gonna close this baby up. Say hi to the Dan H sticker. <laughs> there you go, Steve. And it's time for the startings. There we go. Let's get this key in here. There we are. All right. 
right, guys, there you go. We got ourselves a running 4.0, nice and smooth, firing great. This thing is pretty excellent. Only thing that I gotta do to it is take this thing to my buddy's shop, put it on a lift, and I wanna tighten down that manifold. Still got a slight tickety tick, tick, tick. I think it's a little bit of an exhaust leak. Uh, gonna go take care of that before I give it back to Steve. I wanna make sure this thing is tip top. So that's it guys. Oh, I'm really gonna miss working on this thing. <laughs> it definitely threw me for a loop. It uh, put me through the ringer and I was definitely uh, exhausted. He uses all my resources on this thing, my brain power, my Jeep experience, but um, got it done in the long run. It was worth it. You always learn something about the thing you're working on. In this case, more 4.0 knowledge. So before I close out, big shout out to Gabe. Thanks for your help with the, uh, the wiring mess. Thanks for letting me use your lift. And that's it, we out. We, uh, we're gonna go ahead and film myself backing out of the driveway off to the shop but we're gonna head out of here that's it guys thanks for watching like and subscribe and i'll catch you guys on the next project peace Alright guys, we are here with my buddy Steve. He is in the WJ. It's running and he's gonna drive it home. This is the exciting part. You get to see the smile on his face. Smile. <laughs> How do you like it? Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> no problem, man. My pleasure. Alright, Steve's gonna get out of here and we're gonna watch him drive away. Later, bro. Peace.